Welcome to another Apollo Papyrus episode. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, my interview guest is the author of three books, Teleosis, Come to Me, and Third Person, with Come to Me also having a companion journal available. She is also a public speaker and a story coach. Her name is Amy Vogel, and here's my interview with Amy. Amy Vogel, welcome to Apollo Papyrus. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, well, it's pretty simple. I am an author, I'm a speaker, and I'm a story coach. And so what I do in my professional work is give people a vision for healing and hope, and I help other people create, uh, well, craft their own stories and then create the mediums on how they they get those stories out into the world. So that could be blogs, that could be books, that could be their own speaking engagements and presentations. So I, you know, I just really enjoy helping other people and, um, and I do that in a lot of creative ways. You've written uh, three books, Teleosis, Come to Me, and Third Person. Without spoiling too much of each of your books, what are they about? Well, um, thanks for mentioning the newest release first. That was Teleosis that came out in January of this year. And that is my debut fiction novel. And um, it is all about uh, the story. It's a fantasy, modern fantasy fiction. So set in modern day. And it is the story of the last era of the, the made up civilization, the created civilization of Teleosis, where women were in, were the leaders and they worked in, community with men and that created a civilization that uh, thrived where all of humanity could thrive but unfortunately it's fiction so not everybody's a big fan of that and even in our real world today not everybody is a big fan of that so there was a there was a huge disruption and she uh, had to move to the United States and start over but then gets the opportunity to create the civilization again and so it's her journey through that healing process to get to where she needs to be to live into who she was created to be and to lead this rebirth of the civilization um so it's it was a lot of fun to write it was um a lot of therapy to process and uh and you know fiction is definitely a whole different ball game than nonfiction. my other two books um come to me and third person are Christian spiritual devotionals. And so they're a little bit different. They're, they're nonfiction. They're, you know, in the inspirational self-help category. Um, obviously very connected to, uh, the faith that I had, especially I, I wrote them both. Um, uh, well, I wrote one when I was in ministry and I wrote the other one come to me when I was out of ministry. I released that one in last year in 2023. So. Um, so I, I, I'm a, I'm a genre jumper. <laughs> I'm a genre jumper and, um, and I just really enjoy writing what, where, what inspiration leads me to write. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding uh, you writing a couple nonfiction books and then uh, writing a fiction book, what was the hardest adjustment from going to writing nonfiction to going to writing fiction? Uh, I discovered in the writing process that because I was writing Come to Me and Teleosis at the same time. So it was actually a really good balance for me. I um, I discovered that it wasn't so much of a challenge. They just used different parts of my creativity, different parts of my brain. Um, I've, I've said this before, and it's the best analogy I can think of. Writing nonfiction, especially the kind of nonfiction I write and I coach people to write, is is like a snack. It's it's uh, something that you eat to sustain you and to get you to the next place. But fiction is a whole feast. Um, I started writing fiction because I was reading a ton. I, I went back to my first love of reading fantasy fiction that I've had forever, but I'd lost for a while, especially when I was in ministry and, and raising little kids. All my kids are, are big kids now. But, um, I, you know, fiction, writing fiction is, is definitely um, a whole different, it's a whole different vibe. It's a whole different mode, as the kids say. And, um, you know, it just, it takes a, a different level of creativity and discipline. And, um, and it, it takes a while. 
like a big like a big dinner like Thanksgiving or Christmas or you know you go out to a steakhouse you know it it takes a while to eat it it takes a while to digest it and uh, and so it's just it was a whole different experience. There is a companion journal to come to me in addition to the book itself. How does one use the companion journal? Well, that's a great question, and and I appreciate you doing your research too. Yeah. Uh, the journal itself allows you to read the reflections and the devotionals and then document your own experience right there in the journal. So it's the same content as the book. It just gives you the space to engage with those healing practices that I include right there in the book. So for people who like to write their books like I do, it's, it's a great option. Why did you decide to use a Spotify podcast, which is not... Uh, the first thing one thinks of as an audiobook platform as the platform for the audiobook version of third person? Great question. And I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, so third person was my first book and I published that through a publisher. And so I don't have the quote unquote rights to the content. Yes, it's my content. Yes, I wrote it, but the publisher owns it. So I got their permission and I wanted to do an audio book and, and they were in big favor of me doing it. But truthfully, using Spotify and doing it in a um, in more of an episodic format, it works really, really well for that book. And um, because it's a devotional, because it's a daily thing, but also the expediency of it, getting the material out into the world. And it gave me an opportunity for uh, one of my best friends and I actually record it. She's my, I guess, my audio engineer. And um, so she records it and edits, edits it. But it, it allowed us to do it in such a way that um, that was easy to cut our teeth on. So we're going to be moving forward and actually recording um, probably on Audible the, um, the audio book version of Come to Me. But uh, the Spotify podcast was was easy. It was free, <laughs> and it allowed us to get the experience at uh, little to no cost. How long did it take you to write each of your books? Um, third person took a little while. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, they all took somewhere between like to actually write them to actually put the final, the end on the first draft manuscript. They all took about nine, 10 months. So um, th that's that's about average for me. Um, I'm a little busier now. So my next book, which is a, a sports romance uh, written under a pen name, um, it's actually going it, to, it's taken me a little longer to write. Um, I've had some, some uh, lots, of, lots of things come up that's kind of uh, derailed my creative process, but all good things, all good things. And um, so if I, you know, if I have the time and I have the capacity, it takes me about nine to 10 months to write a, to actually write the book. And then there's the whole process afterwards of getting ready to publish the book, the editing, the, uh, the, the, you know, the different process that you can go through, the cover design, all of that. There's the, the, the first half of the process takes nine to 10 months. And then the second half takes somewhere between seven, uh, six to nine months. So all in all, it, I could probably do it in a year. Come to me, I did in a year, but um, but I got a little more on, my, more on my plate now, so <laughs> it takes me a little longer to do things. Now, I understand that uh, some of your books are self-published and others are traditionally published. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So the first book, Third Person, is traditionally published through Seabed, and they're out of Kentucky, and I worked with them, and it was a great experience because... I got to see how publishing actually works. So from, you know, I took it from word one and then once I finished and, and they, you know, they suggested their changes that they took it from there. So that second half of the process that I just referenced, they did that all, all the cover design, all the formatting, you know, everything to get ready to put the book out into the world and then come to me in teleosis and for the foreseeable future, um, Every book that I publish, I'll be publishing that through my company, A.W. Vogel Publishing. So I'm an independent, self-published author. 
You mentioned a couple of times about a romance book that uh, you're currently writing. Could you give us a little bit of a preview of that? Yes, yes. It's a it's it's a fun book. It's a um, second chance romance. So anybody listening who knows about romance books will know that trope. Um, it's a, a second chance romance. It's an, a reverse age gap. So the main character is an older woman. The uh, the main male character is is a little bit younger than her, and um, it's a sports romance. So it's written around soccer, and it's written around the dynamics of changes in life, changes in family, and it gives these two characters the opportunity to find the love that they've always desired, um, but but never been able to to find. And uh, and it's very spicy. <laughs> it's very very spicy, which. Is why I'm writing it under a pen name, even though my mom knows all about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, aside from uh, uh, podcast appearances like this one, where do you do public speaking appearances, and what topics do you speak about at your speaking appearances? Great question. So I live in Houston, so right now most of my speaking engagements are uh, focused in and around the greater Houston area, which... You know, I'm not opposed to going to other places in Texas, but I've been primarily invited to speak to different women's groups. Um, I've spoken on parenting. I've spoken on healing. I've spoken on um, um, church life uh, because I was in ministry for 10 years. So it, it, my primary, primarily my speaking engagements are around my life experience and, and what I, how I've re- recovered and moved into um, to joy, really, to living a life of joy. I also speak about recovery uh, because I am in recovery, and uh, and also I speak about my business. So my my two topics for 2024, um, if I'm invited to speak anywhere, is uh, or I should say when I'm invited to speak anywhere, is um, they are uh, everybody has a story, and then learning to accept yourself. So I've spoken a, quite a bit on self acceptance. Because that was a big theme of mine last year. How does your story coaching services work? So those people that I'm engaged with, so I, I, I do both independent and then I am a, a literary coach with a company that a hybrid pub, a publisher called Next Page Publishing. And so I, when they get clients in, I help those folks uh, basically write their first draft. Um, and so there's there's a method and, a, and modules and an online course that they go through. And then I read um, it's it's like high level assessment, developmental editing. A lot of it, I'd say 60 percent of it is just keeping people motivated. And um, I also help people on my independent side. I help people figure out how they want to get their content out into the world. So it, it doesn't have to be a book. That could be a podcast. I've been a podcast host. So. I know the ins and outs of that. I did that when I was in ministry. Um, I, I talked to a lady who lives in Canada and she would be, uh, I, in fact, I suggested the, the TikTok handle to her, like your, your sub grandma, like <laughs> your, your grandma, your, your online grandma, because she just has all these wonderful stories and wonderful wisdom that would be perfect for the medium of TikTok. Um, I've worked with people who want to write books, and so I've read their manuscripts. Um, I'm working with a lady right now to set up her brand and, and just figure out how to basically move forward with her business. So there's so many different ways to tell a story, and um, and so I didn't want to limit myself to just writing books, helping people write books, although I do do that. Um I want to help people really understand their options and how to live into that in a way that's liberating and fulfilling. How do you go from uh, being in ministry to writing steamy romance? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Well, um, there's a big, uh, I guess, fallacy really there's there's a big secret that uh, apparently people who are in ministry don't have sex and people don't think about sex we're we're humans just like everybody else (laughs) so um and women in their 40s absolutely think about sex all the time (laughs) so um when i left my role with the church i started reading a lot and ended up getting into what's 
the genre is now known as, thanks to book talks, uh, romanticy. And a lot of that is really steamy. And I grew up in a, uh, it wasn't fundamentalist, it wasn't um, conservative evangelicalism, but I did grow up in the church. And in the church, there's a lot of restriction around expressing your sexuality, especially as a woman. But in general, whether you're, you know, whether you're LGBTQ uh, plus or especially if you're LGBTQ plus, but, but around women and um, and there's a lot of restrictions for men. Purity culture is a real thing, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's expressed or not. And so in reading these romanticy books that had great stories, but also, um, you know, had a lot of sex in them, what they call open door themes, um, open door spice. I just began to realize that this was something that I'd been missing, a, a healthy vision of my own sexuality. And so I read a ton and then I was like, you know what? I'm a writer. Let me try my hand at this. And so it's way different writing it. <laughs> it, requires, it requires so much concentration. You do not have any idea how hard it is to write a sex scene because you have to think through all, all the positions and all the things. But, you know, this was part of me. That, that was part of my growth. That was part of my therapy, um, to grow into my own. Uh, my own self as a woman, my own femininity. And I also wrote this book as a love letter to myself, the the kind of love and the kind of relationship that these two characters had is what I wanted for myself. And, um, and, you know, I'm happy to report that's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes you write yourself into the reality. At least that's been my experience. You write yourself into the reality that you want to have. And, uh, and so this book, which is called the assist, um, is is that essentially manifestation of of what I wanted to experience in my life, and uh, you know it's happening. Amy, you were an amazing guest, and I thank you for appearing on Apollo Papyrus. Absolutely, I'm I'm so honored to have this time with you. It was amazing to interview Amy. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write and read your passion. Bye for now. Remember to subscribe to the Apollo Papyrus YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash at Apollo Papyrus and the Apollo Papyrus Substack newsletter at apollopapyrus.substack.com. Y'all can visit the Apollo Papyrus website at camparinapollo.witsite.com forward slash Apollo Papyrus and follow Apollo Papyrus on threads, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr at Apollo Papyrus. Copy Copyright 2024, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.